So what we're going to do now is we're going to have our second presentation, um, and uh, and we're going to um, and they're going to talk to us about uh, actually a little bit more about the, the book that um, <laughs> the book that we started to to, to talk about um, previously. Um, but I want you to think about in terms of this presentation, it's not just about um, it's not just about uh, ASL. We're really also thinking about here is um, many languages because too often we think about the language of our own country, um, but it, we have to think about the you know the hundreds of languages that are out there that people should be. Uh, being able to be exposed to, and what do you do with multiple languages um, <clears throat> to be able to support kids that um, that want to learn? And so um, now for our second presentation, I know you're from South Africa, but uh, and and you're not down the street, but I'd still love to be able to learn more about what you're doing and, and how you're doing it. So we will um, we will hear from them next. Uh, as you know, I'm from South Africa. My name is Karen Hart, and my company is called Fix the Books. Um, my uh, background is I'm actually an illustrator that learned how to do some coding, um, and I started working uh, with traditional storybooks. Um, I got involved by the South African Department of Education with some uh, with the deaf school, um, and we, uh, we started to try and play with how we could uh, incorporate um, applications in learning uh, for deaf kids. Um, so what I'm going to show you, uh, this is the very, very first time that this group of kids had ever worked with an iPad. And we gave them um, one, one of these books, uh, the one book was The Gingerbread Man, and the other one was The Three Little Pigs. Um, and this was just, I, I just quickly wanted to show you their first interaction. I'm just going to play a short part of the video. So, because they've never seen an iPad, we just wanted to just get them started. And from there on, we left them to explore. And, and we tried not to interfere unless they asked us. on the iPad without having any instruction and discovering things on the iPad that, that we didn't even show them. Um, I'll show you in the app later, but some of the uh, of all the videos you can expand to full screen. Um, and they, they found this, but they didn't know how to shrink it back in again. So, so, so we had to um, try and see how they experienced the app first before we could really s start to show them how to use the app. But we wanted to have an organic experience and, and not a forced experience. Um, so um, what I also want to say about this, um, this project that I'm involved with is we are dealing with kids who have very little literacy skills, as in reading or writing. Their sign is, is not bad, um, but they're already learning sign in a third language. Most of the children that end up at this school are children who speak different languages, Zulu, Kosa, Venga, Pedi. You know, we have 11 official languages, so we've got a plethora of languages. And it's really difficult to address all of these mother tongue languages in one sign language, because we end up with having so many different versions of sign language that it gets confusing. Um, so what happens in South Africa, we've got two basic trains of sign language. We have Afrikaans sign language, which is inc incidentally this school is Afrikaans. And then we also have English sign language, which is based on American sign language and sometimes British sign language, but um, it is uh, localized. So they don't want to fully adopt American sign language, they want to have local South African sign language. So it's a very difficult language to tackle. There's no solution that I could, I couldn't take the books that these guys are creating and put it in front of our books. Yes. Oh. yes. Um, I couldn't use your books because it is in a different language. 
So we, we started creating these books with um, just folk tales. Uh, our first two stories were folk tales, and now we progress into um, the stories that are related to the curriculum. Um, so I'm going to quickly just go through this with you guys. Okay, that's about <coughs> me. Um, why did we use the iPad? It's an intuitive tool. We don't have to teach another language to use the tool. It's not a computer with a mouse and a CD-ROM and click here and click there. It's, it's a natural tool of, of exploring and learning. Um, as I've said, there's no sign language apps in South Africa. There, there is just nothing available. Um, and another challenge that we're facing is we are creating these apps in Afrikaans sign language now. But the school, because it's English is a more universal language in South Africa, we are transitioning over from Afrikaans to English. So our first exposure for the kids for these applications are in Afrikaans, the language they are now familiar with. And then we will do a comparative learning by switching over to English, because English is just a much more um, used language in South Africa, and trying to get rid of the confusion be between Afrikaans sign language and South African English sign language. So it's, uh, there's, there's many facets that we have to address with this school. Because our kids come from all the different language bases, we also have to teach them um, a language in which they can learn. Um, but they didn't get any exposure to language. As, uh, as in the previous presentation, we sp um, they spoke about the crucial time of exposure to language. Um, and that's from baby to age three, year, uh, three years old. Most of the children that end up at this school didn't have that exposure to language. So they end up at the school with no language. So signing, because it's, it's a natural language um, for the deaf, is much easier to pick up. But we are finding that we have functionally illiterate children. So they can speak in sign language, but they cannot function within the hearing world. And unfortunately, because deafness is an unseen disability, these children get marginalized and there's no future for them. They end up either becoming a burden to the state or they end up um, having menial jobs. They become data, and data capturers or mechanics and there's no future prospects. That's all that they can do. And I say that this is not good enough. We have to give a better future for the children. And that's why we started this project. Um, I'm gonna quickly uh, challenges faced teaching deaf children, it's visual based learning. Um, we have sign language versus written language syntax. Our syntax is so different and I think a lot of hearing, hearing people don't know that. Um, we would say the man is walking in the street, whereas in deaf uh, uh, sign language we would say man street walk. So there's, there's a lot of elements of our written language that is not within the sign language for us in South Africa, I don't know if it's the same case for ASL here, but a lot of words get left out because it's just not part of their sign language. Um, and what happens then when we start reading, they don't know what those words are and they get stuck on that word that is not part of their sign language and we don't get further learning because it's interrupted. We have to stop the lesson, we have to try and explain what we, what we are talking about and we can't get a good flow within the lessons. So um, the other thing also that we have is we don't have parents that sign uh, to their children. So we don't get that foundation of sign language from the beginning. So it's a multifaceted problem. Um, and I think we face different um, challenges in South Africa than what you do here because there's just such a deficit in the learning. What we find as well is that our deaf children are at least three to four years behind their hearing peers. So a lot of people assume that deaf children are dumb. Deaf children have exactly the same um, intelligence uh, development as hearing children, but because they can't speak and because they can't write, people assume that they are dumb, which just multiplies that problem where there's no job prospect. So we're trying to change the system within South Africa to get a, a, a better future plan for our children. And this is the start of it. Uh, let me just move on. 
what I started with initially was a very, very basic little app about shapes um, and the alphabet. And we, we went and we did a shape, uh, that's an oval. Um, we did the finger spelling at the bottom and a picture that was created out of shapes. And then at the top there, we had a little video of um, the this, this sign interpreter showing um, the shape. That's what we started with. What we ended up with was the app that you guys had seen uh, with the three little pigs. Um, so I just wanted to show that this was our first baby step towards where we are, where we are going now. I am not um, an academic, and I, everything that I've learned about the deaf community, I've learned over the last two years. And we are trying to build this project and learn and see how the kids interact with it. But because there's nothing in our, in our language, we had to go and build something for ourselves. These are the words, uh, or these are the classic books that um, age, uh, well, for us, grade one to grade three, so that would be age seven to uh, nine. These are the books that they are reading. Um, and this is a book that my grade one can read, who's a hearing child, quick, quick. But we have nine year old children that are still stuck with books like this because there's just nothing suitable for them. And that's yet another reason why we started these books. What the school has created was a system of objects that would be associated with um, verbs. Um, you would see here, uh, the red dot would always be a red word, um, which is a verb. And uh, to try and make a connection between the syntax of the deaf and the syntax of our, uh, of our written text. So we try to incorporate that into the book where you'll see that there's red words as well in the book, and those are all our verbs. Um, we, we decided in this book to just focus on verbs. Our first six books will focus on verbs, and then after that we'll start incorporate, uh, incorporating more descriptive words. Um, but this is our, our first stepping stone. What we also do is uh, we have a, a speaker called the Mighty Dwarf. It works with vibration. Um, and this school specifically has got wooden floors everywhere, so we plug the Mighty Dwarf into um, so that the kids can also start making the connection between there is sound associated with the words that we are using. Um, because it's mostly a silent world, we wanted to also expose them to, the, to that part of, of the hearing world. Um, this is a, the next app that I'm creating now, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the authoring tool that I'm using. Uh, it's called uh, Debbie Books Composer, and um, what's nice about this, this authoring tool is I can immediately see what I'm creating. So if I'm working on my workbench, I'm physically doing the layout of the book on the iPad, and I can immediately swap over to preview. So when, when we do work with the book and we need to do our testing, I can go to the school and we can sit with the page and we can have the kids play around with the page and I can make immediate changes after that session if we see that something wasn't intuitive. Um, this was just one of the girls just, just working with the iPad with that session that I showed you guys earlier. Um, I've spoken about Debbie Cook's Composer now, so this is the slide we can actually skip. Um, we'll go into Composer um, after the session so, uh, so I can explain more about how Composer works. Um, what I wanted to say about what's next for us is um, we, uh, we want to create more books. We, we need to find funding for all of these things. At the moment, these applications are all free. Um, and. Um, we get paid for the development, obviously there are costs involved, but, but we, uh, the school is not a school that can um, absorb these, uh, these funds, so we are looking for more funding to create more books. We've only created six books in the two languages, both Afrikaans and English. Um, we see this as a long-term project. As the kids progress and their skills get better uh, with, their, uh, with their reading, uh, we want to move on to creating more difficult books for them to work with. Um, we are looking at uh, starting a study uh, with a local university to, to monitor and really, um, uh, how can I say, um, justify what we're doing, to see whether we are doing the right thing. Because there is nothing else like this, but we need to know whether we are, are doing the right thing. Uh, we'll be working with 24 pupils, <coughs> one, two, three, 
Um, and the next step is to find more partner schools to, to test this out. What I also have to say about this app, and I'm just quickly going to go into the applications, um, we can, let me just go back to the beginning. Yeah, um, on. Because um, Compose is such a versatile tool, I can swap out any language. So what we've, what we've created was a basis of a story. But we can create this book in English, we can create it in Afrikaans, we can create it in American Sign Language. All we need to do is swap out our audio, swap out our video, and swap out the text <coughs> and the figure spelling at the bottom. Um, I just want to explain something about the flow of our book. Um, uh, we, spoke about, uh, we spoke earlier about having a whole story. Um, what we needed to create, because we couldn't focus on the sign, we had to focus on the written text, we could not use the whole story model. And we really debated it in the beginning whether we were going to put the whole story in sign at the beginning of the book um, so that the kids could see the story and then read it. But because we wanted to encourage reading over sign language, we had to take that part away. And that's why we built the functionality into the book um, that the book can be used um, uh, as a reading app first and then we have sign almost as an explanation of the reading that comes afterwards. So if you, if you see these little icons here at the bottom, if you touch that icon, it plays all of this text here up there in the, in the movie, and I'll, I'll do that now. And if you touch that button for the hard of hearing um, students, they can also hear the auditory part of the book. But we wanted to keep all of these sections separate because we didn't want to confuse which part of learning we were addressing.